I almost guarantee, almost guarantee you're making this retirement planning mistake. All right, so I got my social security statement because I like to keep hard copies. This is from 2010. And it says, July, April 12th, April 2nd, 2010. It says, Josh, you old buddy, at your full retirement age, at 67, because I was born after the year 1959, I was born in 1970, my full retirement age will be 67. It says, if you keep working until your full retirement age, 67, and you continue to earn the same kind of income you made the previous year in 2009, I made 85,688 taxable social security. If I continue to make that kind of income, my benefit at my full retirement age will be 2236. All right, so 2236 at 67. All right. And I'm sitting there thinking, and this is back when I was 40 years old in 2010. I was 40 years old. I had paid into Social Security 43644 My employer had paid 43644 as well. So between us, we paid 43644 times 2. We paid $87,288 to get to a measly... 2236 by the time I'm 67. That's what you think. All right. And if you just look through my earnings history, the, the money I made in 2009 was the second highest I ever income I ever made. The money I made in 2008 was my highest, and I never came anywhere above uh, 70,000. Never. I had 68,000 and not, nowhere above 70,000. So basically, my whole career. I never made more than 50 except for one, two, three, four years up until the last 10 to 15. All right, so I'm sitting there thinking, man, at 22,000, 2,200 bucks a month when I'm 67, that's 27 years from now. That sucks. And I started getting my calculator. I said, you know, based on putting in, you know, roughly on my earnings, I'm making 80, let's say 88,000. Times that by 6.4, 6.2, let's say between my employer and me, 6.2 I pay, my employer pays 6.2, that's 12.4%. So 88,000 times 12.4%, that's $10,912 a year I'm putting into Social Security at my current earnings of uh, $86,000 or 88,000, whatever I made, 85,000. So basically you're saying if I put in 10,912 between my employer and me, I'm only going to get 2236 by the time I retire and take Social Security. And that's at my full retirement age, not even at 62. So then I say, well, screw that, man. What if I just got that 10,912 on my own and start putting it into an investment? We'll just say making 7% a year for simplicity. Now, remember, this is in 2010. So I'm 27 years away from retirement at 67. Uh, my future value would be $812,000. Times that by 0.05. Oops, 812,000 times 0.05. Hold on a second. Eight. Let me pause real quick. That would give me a benefit of about 33,833 a month. And I'm starting at zero. So if I if I wasn't investing in the Social Security, my taxes, and instead of investing in myself with a bet would get 7% a year rate of return, my benefit would be 33,833 a month times 12. Yeah. And that's starting from zero right now, just for 27 years. And that's what everybody makes. They say Social Security is a horrible system. But they're missing the the, the, what they're missing, though, about Social Security. Now we're going to look at my current, so, my last year's Social Security statement. I'm no longer getting a measly 2236. Now I'm getting, again, if as long as I continue to make the kind of money I make, I'll get 3106 at 67. So my benefit has gone up by basically $900 a month. That's going to be my new benefit. How much have I put into it? My employer and myself, and now I'm self-employed, so I'm both my employer and myself. I put in $222,000 in Social Security, which is about $140,000 more uh, over the last what, 14, 12 years since 2010. 
So over the last uh, 10, 12 years, I put in 140,000, uh, 140 divided by 12. I've averaged about $11,666 a year between myself and my employer. And now my benefit is 3106 as long as I continue to make the money I'm making now, which is the max, until I'm 67, which would be in 15 years. All right, so my benefit has gone up, but it gets even better than that. Oh, boy, hold on a second. So when I'm 67 years old, my benefit won't be 3106 It'll be indexed. And this is what I want to point out here. Indexing factors for Social Security. When we compute a person's benefit, we use a National Average Wage Indexing Series, AWI, to index that person's earnings. It ensures that a worker's future benefits reflect the general rise in the standard of living that occurred during his or her lifetime. Um, so basically what happens here is we're saying, we're going to take your earliest year of eligibility when you turn 62, and that will be for me, 2032. And we're going to basically times your the amount of money you made in various years by your indexing factors. Now, this is going to be off some regard because we're only in 2022 earliest year of eligibility. So we're, we're, we're a lot of presumptions in here for future indexing. We don't know what's going to be. And indexing stops when you hit 62 as well. And then it just goes to COLA. So basically, by the time you're 62... They're going to start using cost of living adjustments. And if you look, I think I got a spreadsheet up here. And here's a brief spreadsheet I did. If you're looking at AWI, the average wage indexes versus COLAs. Historically, the AWI has been about 4.37% a year is the average increase year over year for AWI. And I think COLA is a little bit less than that, uh, 3.68. Uh, 3 so eh, about 50 basis points or so higher for average wage index. So your AWI until you're 62 will give, has at least historically has given you more of a boost than the COLAs. Either way, not only are you increasing your benefits by continuing to work, but you're indexing them to increase with standard of living increases as well. And then again, once you hit 62, it'll be done for a COLA. So let's just, for simplicity, my benefit now won't be 3106. My benefit, assuming I work no more, and that was, my, there's a lot going on in this. I, I can't, no. I don't want to assume I work no more. I've done videos on that before. What happens if I stop working at 55? I'm just going to assume I continue to work at my full pay, like, like the Social Security statement says, until I'm 67. I'm just going to give myself a rough 3% in increase in benefits. So that's it, 3% a year. So we're going to say 3106 is my present value. I got another... Uh, 15 years before I'm 67, and I'm not making any payments, and uh, we're gonna give myself three percent a year. My benefit at that point will be 48.90.39. 48.39. So you see how it's changed. It's gone from what was it before? 22. 22.36. To 3106 to 4839. And so if you're using your social security statement to basically say my retirement, I need to plan for social security in 10, 15, 20 years to pay me 2236. You're freaking you're missing, you're missing out. You're gonna force yourself to save more because that's not what social security will pay you. They increase your benefit to compensate for the increasing standard of livings and cost of living. On top of if you would make more money and add to all that stuff. But even if you don't, just the fact that alone, even if I was only getting 2236 and I made that same amount of money each and every year without increasing my income, because there's only so much you can increase it to anyway. And 88,000, 85,000 was pretty much on the high end back then. My benefit's significantly higher just because of, again, a rough 3% uh, indexing factor you see what i'm saying so i mean even back then just use a three percent indexing factor would give me a four thousand dollar month benefit relative to what a lot of people do with social security they say i'm only getting 22 36 in 27 years 27 years from now i'm only gonna get 2200 bucks in social security no 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 you're not if you're gonna do retirement planning do it right man do it right so don't stress yourself out
All right. Love your thoughts. I'll put a link to the indexing factor so you can run your own numbers on your own. Remember, just as an FYI, on the indexing factors, got to point this out. So in 2009, I made $85,000. That would be $170,000 in today's indexing factors. The max benefit or the max taxable uh, wage is like one hundred fifty. dollars so you, you can only do it up to the max taxable wage, just as an FYI. When I first started doing this, I confused myself. I was like, well, I, my benefit should be a million bucks a month. That obviously, I'm being silly. But remember, the max taxable wage is the max that the indexing would give to you, if that makes sense. So just be careful that you don't overestimate your expenses. Because then you'd be like, man, I'm going to make 8000 bucks a month. I don't have to save anything. I would just give yourself a basic 3% cost of living. I think that's a safe bet right there. All right. We'll see you.